Take a look at the stop sign. Notice the colors of the stop sign. Even if you zoom out, you can see it from afar. However, let me change up the colors a little bit. So this, my friend, is the new color. Now from afar, you cannot even tell whether there is something there. Even if you zoom in, this, my friend, these two color combinations are a torture. It's just crashing the parts of my brain and it's likely to do that on the road as well. Now I want you to take a look at this printout right here. The text is white and the background is in yellow. Already it's a bit moderate to figure out the text from the background. But if you bring it closer to an orange or a warm light, it gets even harder. It's very not legible, right? But if you take it to the blue light right here, right here we have blue light. If we take it close to it, have a look how easy it is to figure out or differentiate the text from the background. Now the first example of color combination with the stop sign and the new colors was already bad. But in the second example, we know that maybe while designing some colors might look okay, some combinations might look right. But then again, under certain lighting conditions, they just might not make sense. There is a concept called color contrast ratio with the lowest value being 1 and the highest 21. You can also write it as 1 is to 1 and 21 is to 1. Why? Because it's a ratio. Obviously, since it is a ratio, it is calculated between two colors. Now, as you might have already guessed, the higher the color contrast, the more readable, the more legible your text or graphical information will be on a given background of a certain color. The lower the color contrast, the harder it will be for you to read the text or figure out the information on a given background of a certain color. Now let's take a look at this example. On the left hand side, we have combinations of text and backgrounds in different colors. And on the right hand side, we have their color contrast ratios. So as you can tell, the color contrast ratio between the color of the text and the color of the background is the lowest for the top one. It is really a torture to figure out the text. Either you cannot really see the text or it's going to be a torture. Either of those cases, that's going to be a very low end of contrast ratio. Then we have a little higher. Now this looks legible. You can actually read it. Even if you zoom out, it's readable. But if you look at the third one, it's more readable. Even if you zoom out a lot, print it and look at it in different lighting conditions, this will be legible. As you can see, the color contrast right here is very high. And for the fourth one, it is the highest out of all these. And as you can tell, it is very, very legible, the most readable in all of these four examples. Now I'm going to tell you how to get these numbers later, but can I share with you a little trick in Photoshop? That way you can quickly figure out whether your text or graphical information is legible or not. By the way, this is just a thumb rule. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color. Choose a color with no saturation like white, gray, black, something like that with zero saturation. Hit OK and then change the blend mode to color. Now look at the difference. With the one, you can tell that the difference between the text and the background is less. With 4.2, the difference is a little bit more. With 7.56, the difference is even more. And with, of course, 12.68, the difference is the most. By the way, it is not just limited to text. Similarly, let's take a look at graphics as well. Here, it's just so hard and torturous on the eyes. Now, as we progress further into higher and higher contrast ratios, it becomes more and more legible. Now, this is important. Very, very important. I'm going to tell you why. Many of us have difficulty in differentiating colors. A lot of us are colorblind. And as we age, we all age. I'm aging. You're aging. We are all aging. Our abilities change in differentiating colors as well. Let's take a look at this example. Even I'm having a great deal of difficulty in telling the difference between the text and the background. By the way, if you're colorblind or you're going through some degree of colorblindness and watching this video and you're having challenges in differentiating between the text and the background, I'm just trying to show how the text disappears when a colorblind person sees it. For all of us, as a reference, let's create a solid color adjustment layer, gray, and change the blend mode to color so that all of us can see the text properly. Now, there is a colorblindness simulator in Photoshop which tries to show how it would look to a colorblind person of a particular condition. So if you go to view, proof setup, there are two types right here. Let's go with the first one. And as you can tell, you cannot even figure out the text and the background. So good design is not just about colors looking fancy. It's also functional. If you want to read more about it in depth, there's a whole article with all the math and the explanation right here. So it's linked up in the description. So as you can tell, this is the formula for contrast ratio where L is the relative luminance. How to calculate the relative luminance? You have it right over here. All of the formulas, if you want to delve deep into it, 
there it is. So how do we get these color contrast values like 1, 4.2 between the two colors? Well, let us first understand what basically is color contrast. In very, very simple terms, color contrast is the difference in the intensity of light emitted by two given colors per unit area, of course. So what does it mean when the contrast ratio here is one? It just means that per unit area, the intensity of light this color is emitting and this color is emitting is the same. Now, as I told you, there's a lot of math involved. If you want to figure out how to calculate it, what is relative luminance, what are the formula, there are a lot of concepts. If you want to dig deeper, please do read the articles linked up in the description. However, you really don't have to do any of that. There are a lot of free calculators online and two of my favorites are Adobe and colors with an extra O or coolers, however you pronounce it. So let's look at Adobe. Go to color.adobe.com and just click on accessibility tools right here. Similarly, you can also go to coolers and inside of tools, you will find contrast checker. Now you can pick whatever color you want right here. So I'm gonna pick red here and for the background color. So this is the text color. We have the background color. You also have graphic components example right here. And here we're gonna pick gray color. Now, as you can tell, the contrast ratio is very low. Now, the great feature here is that it makes you suggestions for modifications. So you can either modify it this way. Now you have a better contrast ratio, which is going to work for many of the guidelines. We're going to get to guidelines later. Or you could have also chosen this one, which also works. Similarly, in color contrast checker from coolers.co, you can choose two colors and it's going to tell you how good it's going to look on small text and large text. If we choose a color which is very similar to that one, something like that, it's telling us that both in small text and large text, this will not look nice. Now, if we choose something like this, it tells small text, it just won't work. But if the text is large enough, it's going to look OK. Now, just like Adobe, you have an option to fix it here as well. You can click to fix. You can adjust the background color, the text color or both of them. So let's adjust the text color and it makes the contrast ratio very good literally. Now, what are these guidelines you might ask? Even if you go to coolers, you will see it right here. There is double A, there is triple A, and it suggests different contrast ratios for different situations. We're going to get to that. But what are these? Now, all of these formulas, concepts, and guidelines are of WCAG, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, and they're put together by W3C. Many of you know W3C, World Wide Web Consortium, the main international standards organization for the World Wide Web. These guidelines define how to make the web more accessible for people with disabilities and people with changing abilities as we grow older. And in my opinion, these guidelines are beyond that. Because if you have a look at the value of one, my eyes are burning just by looking at it. So just a quick glance at the guidelines. There are two levels of strictness. There is double A. You can think of it as minimum contrast. That is absolutely a must that is required. And if you do want enhanced contrast, there is AAA. Now, according to the level of strictness of AA, it requires you to have a contrast ratio of at least 4.5. You can write it as 4.5 is to 1, but it's like 4.5 right here. It requires a contrast ratio of at least 4.5 for normal text and 3 for large text or bold text. And if you go by the AAA level strictness, it requires a contrast ratio of 7 for normal text and 4.5 for large or bold text. If our designs are not accessible, what is even the point? But it goes beyond that. If the contrast ratio is too low, it just doesn't look okay. You cannot even figure out the text. Even if you show it to a person who has zero color blindness, a color combination with the contrast ratio one, either it will be very difficult for him or her to tell the text or the graphical information or it will absolutely burn the eyes. So always check the color contrast when you're designing anything. Speaking of design, this video is sponsored by Envato Elements. If you're looking for any design elements, whether it is graphics, templates, mockups, sound effects, music, video templates, everything, you're going to find it here. Unlimited stock photos, stock videos, fonts, Photoshop actions, brushes, video editing templates. The list is just endless. And you get all of that unlimited for a one subscription fee. So check the link in the description to check it out and stay updated with the latest discounts. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips tricks or tutorials thank you so much for watching i'll see you in my next one until then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating